Hello, and welcome to the Spoonie Authors Podcast, a podcast where we explore a different disabled author's stories each week. I'm your host, Diana Gunn, and joining us today is Amara Lynn. Amara Lynn has always been a quiet daydreamer. Coming up with characters and worlds, worlds since childhood, Amara eventually found an outlet in writing. Amara loves anything to do with pirates, villains and superheroes, and angels and demons. Their novella, Tundras, Travelers, and Other Travesties, was released just this past Monday. Hello, Amara. Hello. It is great to have you with us. I'm very excited for your newest release. Congratulations. And tell us more about your new book. So I'm going sort of sci-fi with this one, um, finally. Um, I've always really been into sci-fi, but this is my first really sci-fi piece. And it's a realistic sci-fi. I call it Hope Punk and solar punk um hope because it has a hopeful theme message and then solar punk because um one of the uh key elements of the story is uh the main character is on an outpost that is powered by solar panels um and so essentially it's just a chill piece of realistic sci-fi with unapologetic queerness and it, it kind of touches on long-term effects of climate change in there because uh, the world, it's, it is Earth, but what's happened is, you know, you know as a result of climate change, you know, polar ice caps melting and things. Uh, one of the things that that would change is the weather in certain places, and this area has become basically a, a tundra all the time. Interesting. Um, can you tell us a bit more about your main character? So Ice is, um, Z has lived on this outpost, um, sorry if I'm having trouble, um, Z your whole life. I haven't used this pronouns out loud a lot, so, um, pardon me, but, um, Z has neuro, neo pronouns is what Z ends up picking actually in the story um and your parents were also a queer couple that manned this outpost um but they are both gone so ice is there all alone um but also has chronic pain issues so it's a struggle to maintain the outpost from day to day but ice is all alone there so it's it's not super taxing because Basically, the position is just waiting there, having this space available when people used to have to travel, when they still lived there, someplace they could come, you know, on their way to the next destination. So you touched on ICE having chronic pain, and this is uh, something that you also struggle with. Why is it important for you to write this story about this character who shares this part of your experience? So I, I guess it's just something that sort of happened when I started writing the character. Um, but I thought, you know, this is something that's part of normal life that a lot of people don't see, um, especially with chronic pain. It's, it's really an invisible illness in a lot of ways. And you know, I wanted to show an experience outside the normal and, um, yeah, you know, I think it's good to have in there because I've when I've put the blurb out there to a couple people, um, they've been like big yes, you know, because it's it's just something that's not out there a lot yet. And did you find that writing uh, this character with chronic pain was cathartic, or in other ways helped you process your own experiences with disability? Yeah, I think so. Um, and like I said before, I think it just sort of happened. You know, I was I was originally writing this for um, an anthology call, and um, I was probably having a bad pain day, and I just kind of threw that onto my character as well. <laughs> but it's like, you know, why not? 
give the character a little more something to spruce up the personality. And um, but I I think it it was really kind of cathartic because it's not something I talk about a lot, and you know it's something yeah you know, I'll probably struggle with this for the rest of my life. You know I I don't even know what's wrong with me. <laughs> you know I just hurt sometimes and. You know, sometimes you just have to keep going, even if you don't feel good. And I think it did kind of help me process that. Yeah, and it's so much harder to process when you don't have a diagnosis. It's such a a struggle just going through that process of trying to get the diagnosis and living with this pain that you don't understand. It's just there. (laughs) Yeah, and it, it changes over time, too. You, you'll you'll tell them one thing's wrong with you and then all of a sudden you get this new symptom and you know you stay just like well am I dying or did I just get a new chronic pain symptom <laughs> ah yes I have heard this cry before uh many times the, the am I dying is this just a new part of my illness what is happening to me should I go to my doctor should I not go to my doctor <laughs> it can be really complicated. Yeah, and I I won't really go into all the doctor stuff, but you know, it's it's all it just lends more to that. It's just so invisible. You know, people it's almost like people don't believe you. Like but so it's so just one of those things you have to keep going sometimes. Yeah. Do you think you will write more stories about ice? I would like to. I, I have a few ideas in my head. Um, I won't talk about it because I would give away, you know, what this particular story is about. But, you know, I think it would be interesting to carry on that story and show more of, you know, day to day life that ice will have you know after this story awesome well i would definitely be excited for more of that um are are hope punk and solar punk actually established genres or is this just something you (laughs) Um, came up with they they are um because I, I originally wrote this actually for a solar punk specific call, and um, I'm not sure what the whole punk part means. Honestly, I've looked it up before, and I've, it's already just left my mind. I think it just means that it's sci-fi. <laughs> but um, yeah, the the call was solar punk, and it um, is actually the original call is what inspired a lot of why things are the way they are in this story is I started kind of building on ideas, um, inspirational things that were thrown out there you know, on the on this call. Um, and it just kind of went from there. But the basic gist of solar punk is it has to do with, you know, how would people survive after um, the effects of climate change uh, affect the way that our world works and you know one of the things is alternative power sources um, via solar panels and this actually takes place in a landfill outpost it's actually built into a landfill and the reason for that is because um, solar panels are actually very commonly placed atop of landfills because that gives them better sunlight access being high up like that so that's the reason for that a weird little fact for you (laughs) that is so strange you learn the most interesting things when researching stories it's fantastic isn't it (laughs) yeah (laughs) and then yeah hope punk was because um it didn't get accepted into that call and then i found another call for hope punk and that just means anything with a you know, a hopeful message theme. And so that's how it kind of became both. And it didn't make it into those things. And I said, you know what, it needs to be out there because 
it's it's a unique piece it's part of me and so it's out into the world of self pub now uh, absolutely that's awesome and is most of your work self published or yes all of it right now is um my first book was published with a small press and then once I had the rights back to it, I republished it uh, myself. And then everything I've done since then is self-pub. Um, and I plan to do three more things this year, self-pub at the moment. So that's just kind of the path that I feel is right for me right now. See what happens in the future. Three more things. That's a big year for you very exciting yeah I like to do shorter things novellas because they're easier to plan follow through with so um, this is the shortest one this this one's a really more of a novelette 5800 words and then um, my next one will be almost novel length and then the other one will be about 15k and I'm not sure what my fall release will end up being because it's not completely written yet. So we'll see what happens with that one. Wow. Well, you know, you do also need to take time to rest. That is important. I just want to <laughs> remind you and myself and every other writer out there, because let's face it, most of us are workaholics. Uh, yeah, definitely. If I'm not feeling good, I'm just like, screw it. I'm lay back in my recliner watching tv <laughs> yeah i definitely struggle with that um you know getting myself to actually take a break and respect my body when it needs rest is not an easy thing for me and i know that a lot of other writers struggle with it so kudos to you for actually like being on that <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm hoping i stay a little more organized this year but I feel like I'm off to a really good start so far. It's, it's as well as things you have to balance. Do I feel good enough to work even for 10 minutes? You know, because that makes a difference. It adds up, you know, but if I don't, you know, it's okay to take a break. Yeah. I honestly, I forget where I originally saw the concept. I've seen it in loads of places over the years, but there's a, the concept of having uh, no zero days where it's like exactly that. I, I will work for like 10 minutes. I will do one small thing to push me in the direction that I want to be going in my life. And then I can at least say I've accomplished something regardless of how ill I am. Right. And I've kind of been trying to do that, but I notice when I take a, a full on, oh no, I feel awful. I usually take two days off and then I, can get back to it even if it's just a little bit and working my way up and then taking another break yeah <clears throat> so you mentioned that chronic pain isn't something that's really you know shared in stories um can you think of any good stories that you've seen that include chronic pain or have other good disability representation, things that have really spoken to you as a disabled person? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, if anybody hasn't checked check out um, Zan West, um, their stories have a lot of that and um, usually it's own voices rep. Um, they, they have a short novelette called a um, nine of swords reverse that has a character that manages chronic pain. And that's a really sweet, um, you know, unapologetic queer story, you know, feel good, kind of like mine is. So, you know, maybe that kind of inspired me to get this finished and get it out there. So I would definitely recommend that author and their works. Awesome. And how would you like to see other authors and other media spaces approaching disability representation in the coming years? Yeah. I would definitely like to see more of it and just be not necessarily part of the story, just 
just that it's there. You know, it's it's not always something that needs to be addressed. You know, it doesn't need to be fixed or solved because, you know, the reality is there isn't always a fix, you know. So I'd like to see more of it just be accepted as a part of who people are rather than, you know, trying to heal it. Absolutely. Um, I, I think a, a lot of, especially in, I mostly do fantasy and science fiction stuff, and in those genres there is a lot of tendency to, you know, make it fantasy by giving someone a miracle cure. And every once in a while I feel like that's pulled off, but I think for the most part that concept is extremely problematic. Yeah, it's uh, called a healing narrative. And like you said, you know, it does come off as problematic because, you know, that's, that's to say that this is something wrong with you that should be taken away, you know, and really I wouldn't be who I am and, without it and even though some days I really wish it would go away you know it's not going to I <laughs> absolutely I feel much the same way and I think a lot of other people are right there with you how can people find out more about you and your work not just your most recent story but everything you do okay. well I'm most active on twitter um, usually rambling about music and my characters and I do host LGBTQ writing hashtags so if anybody is an LGBTQ writer they can always hop on in on those and I have a very you know encouraging policy that come and go as you please you know I know not every question is going to work for everybody so if you don't like the question, skip it. You know, if, if you do it two days out of 20, I don't care. You know, I just like bringing people together and, you know, creating a safe, encouraging space. Um, but, and yeah. what is your actual Twitter handle? So, yeah, it's a, <laughs> Amara J. Lynn. And then I'm also on Instagram as Amara J. Lynn. And... I also have a Facebook page uh, that you should be able to find if you just search Amara Lynn Writer. And then I have a WordPress blog, which has links to all my work as it's updated. Not so much blog posts because I forget about those, but <laughs> I keep the book links updated. And that's amarajlynn.wordpress.com. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been a real pleasure to talk to you and good luck with all of your future endeavors, especially those three projects you plan to release next year. That's huge. <laughs> Thank you so much. And thanks for having me. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Spoonie Authors Podcast. The Spoonie Authors Podcast is part of the Spoonie Authors Network, a community initiative devoted to sharing the stories of disabled authors and educating abled people about what life is like for disabled creatives. Transcripts of this podcast are also available on the Spoonie Authors Network. To learn more or become a contributor, visit SpoonieAuthorsNetwork.blog. And of course, if you enjoyed this podcast, make sure to leave a five-star review on your favorite podcast streaming platform.